When you go to begin the creative process of writing anything, not just a song, there's probably nothing much more intimidating than a blank screen. Getting something onto the page to kick off the process can often be the hardest part. So how do you get the inspiration to start the ball rolling in the first place when it feels like your thought pond has been totally drained? This month I'll be looking at a great trick to get your creative juices flowing when you find yourself with a rare window of time to write, but of course all that ends up happening is you stare helplessly at your door's empty tracks area as the minutes tick by. So where do you find that initial catalyst to kickstart the process? This is where this month's easy songwriting guide comes in, as I demonstrate how it's possible to use a random sample as a basis for inspiring new track ideas. The first thing to do is to find a source sample to base your initial idea on. This could be anything random you've found on your hard drive or recorded yourself, but ideally something that features some kind of melodic content, like a chord change or two. For instance, I found this melodic guitar sample from a Ray Russell guitar sample pack found on an old CM cover disc. The idea is to sort of mangle the sample beyond recognition and then try and base a track around the resulting audio. So the first thing I'm going to do with this audio file is reverse it. Most DAWs have an easily accessible reverse audio function. In Logic's case, which is what I'm using here, this is done by ticking this box found in the Region Inspector pane. Next, I'm going to trim the reversed region to 4 bars in length by making sure that the audio's original start point, which is now the end of the region, finishes on a bar line, and then drawing back the beginning of the region to give us the correct length. With this done, I can move the whole thing back to start at bar 1. Slowing a sample down to half time, or lowering the pitch, can provide alternative inspiration if you're going for a more moody feel. To prepare for this, I'll bounce the reversed audio down in place to a new audio file to make the change permanent, so that I can then transpose it down an octave, 12 semitones, using the transpose function in the region inspector. When you transpose audio in Logic, it automatically enables flex and follow, so that the transposition doesn't affect the timing of the audio. At this point we can start to build up some ideas around the sample to begin creating our new track. The mood of the sample now suggests a sort of 808 based, trap influenced beat. So here I've used Logic's step sequencer to create the pattern shown using the 808 Flex stock drum machine designer preset. We can enhance the moody vibe of the track a little bit, and at the same time add some rhythmic interest by judicious use of reverb and delay effects. Using Logic's stock plugins, I've added an eighth note delay and some reverb to the snare drum. plus a splash of additional reverb on the sample itself.
have the backbone of a basic track, it's time to try and come up with some melodic parts to fit, suggested by what the sample is doing. A good place to start is to record or program in some piano or synth chords. Listening to the sample, a D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7 progression over the top seems like a good fit. If you don't know the chords, remember that they don't have to fit exactly, just play what you imagine might sound good over the top. Here I've repeated everything so that we now have an 8 bar section, but at the end of the second repeat I'm going to alter the notes in the left hand of the piano part. Which has the effect of changing the chords to B flat major 7 add 9, G major, and C6 add 11. Now let's add a bass line, using a tweaked massive preset, a sine wave bass with a long release, and a pitch envelope modified to add a pitched 808-like attack to the sound. The part simply reinforces the root note of the chords each time they change, backing up that shift in the left hand of the piano part at the end of bar 8. As you add more parts, you might find it helps to EQ the sample to help it fit into the mix a bit better. I'm using a standard Logic Channel EQ plugin to clean up what's now a bit of a clash in the low end due to that altered bass note. Alternatively, you might find that you can even remove the sample altogether now that you're up and running. Now we're well on the way to a completed 8 bar song section, I'll add in a couple more synth parts to build up the track some more. Here I've used an arpeggiated pad part from Alchemy to back up the piano chords. plus a call and answer style bell melody and breathy vocoder like stab, courtesy of Arturia's pigments. With several parts now in place, we can begin to use our door's arrangement features to spin our 8-bar loop out into a full arrangement. This includes things like 
copying the drum pattern and removing elements from the copies to provide the drum parts for different sections of the song, and trying out different combinations of the parts we've added. 